September 11, 2019, regular meeting of the Zoning Discovery Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting will now come to order. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all of the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chairperson, which is me tonight, if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. Uh, the board works from a prepared agenda and will take up tonight's items in the following order. Um, we are actually, the following items in the seeking's agenda are tabled. This won't require any discussion. Uh, appeal number 2662, that was tabled last month. Uh, the variance appeal uh, for the Champion Realty Trust in 6 Champion Street, that's tabled. Also, appeal number 2665, the limited reduction of yard size by Northeast Civil Solutions on behalf of uh, Gina Magauda on 5 Tasker Avenue. So, we will only be hearing from these. Uh, Appeal number 2666. So would you please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent, thank you. Doreen, would you please uh, read off roll call? Karen Shu. James Siebert. Present. Melinda Torrens. Here. Rudy Karen. <coughs> David Bork. Here. Chip Howe. Here. Jennifer Waters. Okay. That's a little loud. Thanks. Well, I guess uh, we're waiting for some folks to show up. Um, I'll just state. In each instance, um, during this process, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with each of the criteria or provisions of the applicable appeal. Um, the board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all testimony has been heard, the chairman will close the record and the board will adopt findings of fact for each criterion of the appeal and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet that criterion. Uh, it's important to note that if any of the appeal or special exception criteria have not been met, the board must deny the appeal or application. Uh, in many cases, the, the appellant or the landowner may have a personal problem which prompted the request for a variance. Uh, please understand that this really isn't legally relevant to the appeal, no matter how sympathetic the board may be to the appellant's situation. After the board votes on the merits of each criterion, a motion may be made to approve the appeal, and if there is a second, discussion will follow. The board will then state conclusions of law based on the findings of fact to support a decision on the motion. In most cases, the board will request that staff prepare a draft written decision based on the, state of the stated findings and conclusions, as well as any audio and video and supporting materials in the record for approval at the next meeting. Uh, a general vote will be then, then taken on the appeal. If the majority of the voting members present vote in the affirmative, the appeal is approved. Uh, if the majority of voting members vote in the negative, the appeal is denied. Uh, the board's decision stands as of the date the vote was taken, regardless of the approval of the final written decision. Uh, generally speaking, uh, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with superior court, except as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of this board's decision. Also, if anyone present at this hearing may wish to preserve your individual right to file any such appeal, you must be certain that this board's record evidences your appearance this evening and the basis for your support or opposition. Again, we remind everyone this is a public pre proceeding and you have the right to hear and see what is happening. All persons speaking will be asked to first state their name and address or affiliation, and all board members and interested parties are asked to direct their questions through the chair, which again is me tonight. So at this time, is there a representative for our... Uh, no, we've got uh, some uh, decisions. To oh, yes, so thank you, thank you. Minutes, I believe. Yeah, so before we get started into our agenda, deeper into our agenda tonight, uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes from last month's meeting, August 14th? Motion to approve the... Oops. Motion to approve the August 14th min minutes as written. Is there a second? You are second. Okay, all those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? Okay, motion passes unanimous. 
Yes, uh, and also for those of you who are watching, uh, Chip will be voting tonight as a uh, full-time voting member. Let's see, let's review the approval for the draft decision from last month, appeal number 2664. Did everyone have a chance to review the findings in their packets? Are there mm -hmm. any questions on the findings that we made last month regarding 2664? Okay. No. Uh, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the findings? Motion to approve the findings for 2664 as written. Okay. Are there any, is there a second? Second. Okay, second. All those in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. Passes. Okay. Now at this point, we will hear from a representative for appeal number 2666, if someone is present. I guess uh, at this point, if no one is here, do we maybe give them a few minutes? Or uh, if they're not here? I think the fair thing to do is to give them five minutes or so. See if yeah. It's 7 it's 7.07 right now. Let's give them to 7.15. Oh. oh, there they are. Awesome. Timely as if ripped Perfect from time. the <laughs> Welcome. Well, if you're ready, you uh, can oh, step right up to the podium. You came in right on time, sir. <laughs> there were a couple projects ahead of me. They didn't. They were table tonight. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was over the parking lot moving around. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Hi, so, good evening. Yeah, sir, sir, if you wouldn't uh, please just state your name and who sure. you're representing in the background of the project why we're here tonight. Sure. So my name is Jason Vafiatis, and uh, I'm with Atlantic Resource Consultants. Um, we are here on behalf of uh, Dewey Colbeck, who is the, uh, the uh, trustee in charge of the property at Jones Creek that you have in front of you. What we're looking to do here is a real simple, um, excuse me, I'm going to get the terminology wrong, but um, what's that called? The uh, limited reduction of limited, yard size. Yes, limited reduction of yard size. Yes, sorry. This is my first. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals process in Scarborough. Cool. So, oh, yeah. um, Planning Board, usually there all the time. So, uh, <laughs> this parcel, they have a, an existing 8x10 deck that is pretty shoddy. Um, it's rotting through, uh, pretty bad shape. They had gone to Brian at Code Enforcement, which was the right thing to do before they even started working on replacing the deck and wanted to find out what they could do. Um, Turns out they're in a pretty tight setback situation here. Uh, and they would like to expand the deck just a little bit because the size it is now and where the location of the door is, if you're actually on the deck cooking on the barbecue, you have to move and get out of the way so someone can get into the, the house to, to grab something. So they're just looking to expand the deck to the limits you see there. Um, I believe it is uh, 10 by 18 now. Uh, no, 8 by 18. Yep, we took two feet off the okay. side there. Uh, and that does stay within the, the allowed overage that they can go, uh, both in uh, the space, uh, like lot calculations, as well as um, setback reductions. Okay. I guess at this point, does the board have any questions for the applicant? Okay, seeing none, so what we're going to do is uh, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you the questions that are in the application, uh, A through C, and um, you're going to give me an answer. You can either read right off the paper or give us a, just an offhand sure. um, yeah. uh, response. So, A, uh, project description and circumstance, part A, generally describe the project and why limited reduction of yard size is needed. Uh, yeah, so the, the project is to <clears throat> uh, replace and expand the existing deck. Uh, the deck that is there now definitely needs replacement and during the expansion it would be uh, greatly beneficial um, and even a little more safe to have a little extra deck so while activities people are sitting on the deck uh, they don't have to get up and step off the edge or um, do anything untowards and jumping over the, the railing or anything. Sure. sure. Okay. Any questions about that answer from the board? Okay, great. Part B, list the exact dimensional reduction requested. Yep. So it would be, uh, sorry, I don't have my <coughs> paperwork in front of me. Uh, it would be a reduction to 12 feet setback on the, uh, on the side property line, which would be a three-foot uh, reduction from the 15-foot setback. 
and on the front facing Avenue 4 facade, it would be a, uh, a 20 foot setback, which is uh, a, typically a 25 foot setback, so a five foot reduction. Okay. Okay. And it says here in our application that's reduced, uh, the applicant proposed to expand the deck over lawn for 80 square feet, and that, that is reduced to 64 square feet. Is that that's correct? Yes. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so we're now going to read through the following criteria here. Um, we'll go one by one, and if there are any questions from the board, uh, we will ask them and you'll answer them, and that's pretty, pretty straightforward how we're going to treat that. Uh, so, going into this number one, the existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is vacant, non-conforming lot erected. That is correct. The building was erected long before 1991. Okay. Uh, it says here the structure was built in 1910? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chair, I can verify that with the assessor's records. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Longstaff. Number two, uh, any questions on that from the board? None? None. Great. Um, number two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Yes, and uh, we actually, I actually walked around the neighborhood when I went down there on a, a field visit, and uh, most properties do have a deck that allows for both getting up off the ground and into the house as well as some side area we can put a couple of lawn chairs or, or a barbecue. And this fits, the, the deck size fits almost within 95% of other similar properties having similarly sized decks, as you can see in the one next door. Gotcha, so it looks like in the lot 69 right next to it, it's a similar size deck to the one that you're proposing. Yes, that's correct. Okay, any questions for the board? No. no. Okay, great. Uh, number three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or a new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard side, yard size requirements. Yes, and as you can uh, see from the, the, uh, the, the figure that we um, put together for you, the, the actual building envelope is, is it's almost like a mail slot on the postage stamp lot. Uh, it's that dash line that runs through the house. Right. Um, short of extending the deck just in a lengthwise um, configuration, so it would almost be like a ramp going up into the house, that there is no other way to construct this. And we are outside of the 250-foot um, setback of the HAT line as well. So it's, uh, any expansions need to happen uh, between that red line and the bottom of the page. Gotcha. Okay. Any questions from the board on that on that answer? No. Okay. Great. All right. Number four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size yard size requirement. Uh, yes. The the deck expansion is is. You hardly will even know if you saw before and after, other than it's shifted out, um, that it fits the nature, character of the neighborhood and all the other surrounding properties. Okay, great. Any comments from the board on that answer? No? Great. All right, lastly, number five. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. Yeah, that is correct. No, uh, no demolition or construction has, has occurred yet on the property. For the Perfect. Day. And you can confirm, Mr. Longstaff? Yeah. Right. Yes. Great. Um, any discussion from the board on that response? No. No. Okay, great. All right. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. If we have any questions for you, we'll uh, certainly ask them. Great. I guess at this point, I will open the floor to the public. Would anyone from the public like to speak on this application? Okay, seeing no one wanting to get up, then I will close the public, here, uh, public floor. Now, let's go through these items one through five. We'll discuss and vote on each one of these. Also, Mr. Chair, we did not have any written comments or letters or emails. Excellent. Great, thank you for reminding me of that. So no emails or letters or anything, okay? All right, so number one, 
the existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited yard limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll start over here with next to me, Alanda. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm convinced that that function has been met, that the structure was built in 1910, as, as Brian has, Mr. Wastaff has actually confirmed. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Rudy? Um, no further comment. Brian has shared that he can confirm that the building was built in 1910. Okay, great. David? Agreed. All right, and uh, Chip? Agreed. Perfect. It seems pretty straightforward. Yes. Actually, give me one moment here. Let me find where I just put something. Yes. Here it is. Yeah. Great. Uh, all those in favor of number one being bet of this application? Great. That's unanimous. Number two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. I'll start again with you, Melinda. Um, it would appear that other properties have a similar size deck and that this property's building envelope is just so tiny, it would never even be able to be built at this point. Um, and so it does seem like it's reasonable that um, in order to, to actually use the property in the same manner, it would need to have this expansion. Okay, Rudy? I agree. Um, as was shared with satellite photos and information, it does appear that this deck would meet similar characteristics of neighboring properties um, to be used in a manner that's similar to um, the same zoning district. Great. David? Agreed. It's solely within character to the neighborhood. Okay. Chip? Agreed. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, this is, as stated, it's a grandfather non-conforming lot. Um, and it's uh, also a safety issue as well if, the, if they're grilling right outside the door. It's a potential hazard if someone's coming in or out of there. Uh, so all those in favor of number two being met. Okay, that's unanimous. Number three, do the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size, yard size requirements. Melinda. Um, I think it's fairly obvious that it's the extension is, is done in the best way possible to preserve the boundaries and distance between boundaries uh, of the property. I think it, it seems perfectly reasonable to me. Okay. Rudy? As I agree, as was shared with the site constraints setbacks, um, this does appear to be the most reasonable and practical expansion of the existing deck uh, for use. All right. David? Yes, this is the only practical way of doing it, and it does fall within uh, what we can approve uh, as, as an expansion. Okay. Excuse me, Chip? I agree. Excellent. Um, and stated the applicant said that in order to build it out, it would sort of lose that, uh, um, it would lose that impact as far as aesthetic appearance with the surrounding neighborhoods and the way that people are using decks in a similar fashion. Um, so physically, it would be a different deck, which would make it uh, stand out a lot more. Mr. So, Chair, yes, um, I would also add, just add for the board's uh, consideration the fact that because this question asks about due to the physical features of the lot, um, I think one of the considerations here is that it is a corner lot. It has two front yard setbacks, which is not, uh, which is somewhat unique. Not all properties have those two setbacks, so they literally have. Uh, no building envelope because of the two front yard setbacks and the fact that the lot's only 50 feet wide to begin with. Um, I think that's that's one of the features, the physical features that you know the board should consider as they're looking yeah. at this uh, at this particular question. So I would encourage the board to kind of look at that question and, and, and in the findings look at what is it asking about and what is it about this lot that fits the bill on that. Excellent. Thank you Thank for, you for the clarification. Okay. So uh, all seeing that, all those in favor of three being met. Okay. That's unanimous. 
Number four, the impacts of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Uh, Melinda? Um, it, it seems to be a very minor expansion, um, and it, it seems to match the rest of the, the surrounding properties, so I, I see no problem with that. Okay, Rudy? I agree. As Brian previously mentioned, this is a corner lot which has additional constraints and currently the proposed expansion is um, done so in such a manner that it, it meets and conforms to the adjacent properties in the neighborhood. Okay. And I agree. <coughs> Great. I agree. Great. I mean, the, the deck, I mean, it does meet the south side yard setback. Also, um, it's only expanding in one direction towards Avenue 4. Um, so those are also points that we want to note about this answer as well um, mm -hmm. for the application. So seeing that, all those in favor of number four being met. Great. That's unanimous. Number five, uh, the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which a limited reduction of the yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. This is the simplest of them all. The, uh, you've testified that there's, there is no work that's been commenced, and Brian is, long staff has uh, substantiated that, so I see no problem with this one. Excellent. Rudy? I agree. Nothing further to add. Cool. David? So verified. Great. And Chip? Trust Brian. Great. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Brian, you can, you can confirm that, uh, as stated earlier, they haven't constructed or demolished anything yet? They, they hadn't as of my pass through the other day, so. <laughs> Great. Excellent. All right. All those finding the uh, answer of number five being met. All right. That is unanimous. Do I have a motion on the floor to approve appeal number 2666? Motion. I so, Go ahead. I so move to appeal, um, approve, excuse me, I so move to approve this proposal for, pardon me, which? 2666. 2666. Second. Cool. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Great. All those in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. That passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so since the other two items are tabled tonight, there's one item remaining that we do have to review real quick. Uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning is the special exception permit approval <clears throat> for the 2664 decision we did last month. We did approve this one. Did we? we did already approve this one. Yeah, I apologize. Yep, just kidding. Okay. I know it just seems too easy, doesn't it? I know. I just have <laughs> things to do. Uh, are there any comments from the board? Any questions or anything? Anybody wants to ask? Who's the long staff? Do you have like to? I really don't. Uh, I will since, since geez, we've got to get to at least 7.30. Um, Do we? Why? Do we really? <laughs> it's, it's a rule. It's in the statute. It's, yeah. If we, don't, if we don't get to 7.30, it's not actually a meeting. Oh, okay. I'm just making that up. <laughs> I want to know where that's written. That's not <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be, be premature in, in, in making this statement, but it's just a, a matter of fact in that we did finally hear back from uh, FEMA on our floodplain map appeal. Mm -hmm. um, this is not by any means the final say because there are mechanisms within the remapping process and the appeal process that allow the town to go to arbitration. Uh, we were hoping that FEMA would come back and, and, and have some comment and we would have some back and forth um, discussions with them and then hopefully arrive at some reasonable concession um, that was maybe perhaps somewhat different than the maps as proposed but they flatly just denied our appeal. <laughs> there was no discussion, there was no forewarning, there was nothing, they just simply denied it. So, and, and so did they deny pretty much all of the appeals from all of the towns in New York and Cumberland County. So we are um, in the process of um, the, the next step, which is to 
um, provide comment to FEMA on that decision, um, along with some responses to some of the critiques or the reasons why they denied the appeal. And then there's also something called a scientific resolution panel process where we, if we can't come to some reasonable concession, if they fail to, to, to um, do the community consultation that, that was supposed to be the step before the, the decision, which they didn't do, if we can't get them to back up and do that, then um, the community um, can take steps to go to a scientific resolution panel process where we choose uh, out of six consultants, I believe it is, we get to choose three and they get to choose three. And those, those six folks, scientists, uh, will actually look at all of the, both sides of the coin, both FEMA's calculations, our calculations, and then they'll, they'll come up with a decision, um, which, as I understand it, FEMA doesn't actually have to accept. So it's a wonderful process. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but um, so we, again, I don't want to be premature. There's still, there's still some work to be done. We don't know for sure if this is going to be a definite end result, uh, but definitely disappointing to this, um, at this point in stage, given that they've, they've had the appeal since November. And we have, um, once they've uh, dated the letter August 30th, we have 30 days to respond. So they had it for nine months, we get 30 days, a pretty good process, and no comment in between. So mm -hmm. we're not particularly pleased with the process um, to date, but as I say, there's still some work to be done, and we'll see how it all turns out. Uh, there'll be some more uh, on this uh, in, in the news, you know, in our newsletter and in our, on the Facebook page and website and whatnot. We'll, we're still kind of doing a little bit of fact-finding and, and uh, getting organized, so more, more to come on that uh, very shortly uh, as far as what our response will be and how, how that will work out. And that's really the biggest piece of news I guess mm. I have at this point. That's interesting. Mm. Okay. Any other comments? Do I have a motion to adjourn? So made. Second? All Second. in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, folks. I want to know, is that a record? Is that the fastest meeting we've ever had? No.